What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for Webflow Pros. In today's video, we're gonna cover how to create Lottie files using Illustrator and After Effects for your Webflow projects. This is gonna be a basic introduction to building Lotties and we'll be focusing mainly on vector Lotties for these examples. So the first one we're gonna look at is sort of this swoosh. We want it to look like the line is appearing or it's being written on whenever we animate it. Um, so if you have any sort of gradients or effects or opacities applied, be sure to clear all that out so we're compatible with as many devices as possible. We want just a clean vector file here. You can add some of them back in in After Effects if you'd like. Um, if we click on the Artboard tool, we'll see this is about 190 pixels. Since it's vector, we can make it whatever size we want inside Webflow, but with it this small, it's going to be sort of pixelated and hard to work with in After Effects. So let's just size our artwork up to where it's a bit larger. And then if we click on the artboard tool again, if you click on this custom dropdown, click on fit to artwork bounds. That's gonna resize our artboard to match our artwork size. Um, I may scale this down a little bit so it's not directly touching the edges, but the closer it is to the edges, the easier it'll be to position inside Webflow. Um, since we're not gonna animate this by moving it up or down or scaling it up, um, we can leave it pretty close to the sides here. I'll rename this layer swoosh so it's easy to tell what we're working with inside After Effects. And I'll basically save this file. Once we have this AI file here, we can just drag it directly onto our After Effects project and that will start importing it, start opening it up so we can get to work on this file. Um, there's really only one option we're gonna need to check to get started. Once this pop-up opens, it's footage or composition. Footage flattens everything and makes it raster-like, so we'll use composition for this example. Um, so once we open that up, you'll see it actually created this composition here. We can double-click on it to open it up, and this is our composition. You'll see this layer here is our AI layer. Um, we actually need to make this a vector inside of After Effects, so that way we can export it as a Lottie. So we'll right-click on this uh, layer, hover over create and click create shapes from vector layer. Basically what that does is it makes a vector version inside here where we can affect the fill, the stroke, all that's in here for us to work with. So I'll click on our old illustrator layer and just hit the delete key to remove it. Um, now if this was just like a solid stroke, like it was built with a line, um, we could really easily make this line sort of right on or appear. But because this is built with a filled in shape and it has some thick points and then points, this is gonna be harder to animate inside After Effects. Um, one thing we can do to get around that is actually click on the pen tool and we can draw our own line on top of this line and use it sort of as a clipping mask to reveal the shape underneath. Um, so I'll just click and drag out and basically, oops, without selecting the, we don't wanna have this swoosh selected, so. I'll click on the pen tool and then just click somewhere. And then now I can sort of drag this out and create sort of my own shape that pretty much covers it up. If it's not exactly perfect where you want it, we can always adjust these points later, but just get it kind of close to where it's covering up the shape underneath. I'm just sort of drag, uh, drawing these in the middle of the line. And I can hit Command Z to undo and draw the point again. Um, and once we have that shape created, what I can do is open it up open up the contents, open up the shape, open up the fill, and then under color where it says opacity, just drag on that 100 all the way down to zero to turn the opacity of the fill all the way down. Then we can open up the stroke and change its color, sort of to red or some color that'll be easy to see. And then drag on the stroke width to increase its width to where it pretty much completely covers all the purple underneath. If we ever need it to come back to any one of these points, we could click on them and adjust where they fall, um, even drag out the handlebars to change how much it's covering. But that appears to be covering everything up there. Um, basically, we want to be able to animate this line. So if we click on Add and click on Trim Paths, that's going to add trim paths to these, where if we open that up, you'll see we can animate the start point or this end point to where the line's sort of appearing. Um, I'll use the start. It really doesn't matter which one you use, but basically if I click this stopwatch here, it's going to create this blue dot. This is a keyframe, so this determines when the animation starts. So if I drag it back here, the animation will have a bit of dead space, and then it won't start till it reaches this first keyframe here. Um, I'll drag that back to the beginning, and then we'll drag all the way towards the end. And if we drag on the 0% all the way to 100, we're moving that start point. 
to where the line is sort of being, it looks like it's being written on. So I'll drag this start point all the way to 100%. Um, that way it completely ends. And now if we drag back to the beginning and press spacebar for play, um, it's sort of just writing our line on just like we would expect there. And that looks pretty good. We could change the direction if we hit reverse and now it will go from the opposite direction here. But I'll just keep this writing the way it was before. And that appears to be working. Uh, we can also add easing. So if we right click on this point and do keyframe assist, we can do easy ease out, which is just a really simple ease. We could also click on this graph editor here. And with that point selected, we can click on these handlebars and adjust sort of the easing from here. Um, just like we would inside Webflow. We can do that with the start point, the end point, um, however we want it to look. I'm just adjusting this a bit tighter. So now we should see some really dramatic easing going on. And it gets really slow towards the end um, and fast towards this point right here. Um, and that looks really good. It looks really smooth and clean. I'll click on this graph editor again to get out of it. And now we still have our anchor points there. Um, so we want to use this red line as a mask for the purple line. So I'll collapse this for a second and drag the red line underneath the purple one. And um, basically you may not have this option shown at first, but if you click on this toggle switches and modes and this mask could drop down here, if we click on the first option, the alpha mat, um, that one's basically going to mask this red shape inside of the purple one. So now if we play, you'll see the organic looking purple shape is now being animated. Um, let's just go ahead and grab this hex code from this purple color here and then open up our red shape again and basically change the color of the stroke to the color we wanted it to be. And now it's just being animated just fine there. Um, we may even want to change the color from purple to a different color during this animation. So we can click on this color stopwatch to add a point here somewhere in the middle and then advance a little bit further maybe I'll go into here and grab maybe this pink color so I can get that hex code, go back into After Effects, and then just change the color of the stroke to pink. Um, so maybe we'll want this to happen a little faster, so we'll drag those dots pretty close to each other and bring it back a little further. So now that line sort of fades to pink while it's being animated or written on. Yeah, just like that. And that's looking pretty good. Um, so once we have this pretty much set up and ready to go, we're going to use body move in to export sort of a Lottie file. Um, I believe Lottie files also has its own extension. I'm going to link in the description of this video Webflow's tutorial on how to install body move in. But basically, once you have it installed, click on window, uh, go under extensions, click on body move in, and that pops up this body move in dialog box. And then from here, we can basically click on the settings. The only one we need checked is this option here. Um, these are for if you had raster or different options inside. Um, then we can basically select the folder we want to save this in. And we can click on Lottie, this folder here, and just name this swoosh. It's going to save this as our JSON file. Click Save. Um, if you click Render and it doesn't work, just make sure you have this check mark selected, this little toggle here. To make sure to say this is the lot you want to export. Then we'll click on render and it saved it out pretty quickly. Just like that, it's finished. It's ready for us to upload and use in Webflow with any sort of trigger that we want. So you can use this method to create different sorts of lines, squiggles, swishes, however you want them to write on. Um, the next one we're going to look at is sort of this file here. And with this one, basically what we want to do, maybe we'll make this whole smiley face move up and down a little bit. Maybe we'll rotate some of these shapes. Um, but if we wanted to animate these separately, what we're going to need to do is have these each on their own layer. And that can get kind of difficult, especially if you have multiple pieces. Like maybe I want to also make the smiley face wink or blink. Um, then I'll need his eye to be separate from the rest. So I'll just ungroup all this maybe group these pieces back together so now the eyes are separate. Basically, we would have to create all these layers manually and drag these pieces onto their own layer, but there's a shortcut to make this faster. If we click on this hamburger icon up here, there's two options for release to layers, and you would want to select the sequence option. Basically, that's going to take every grouped item and put it on its own layer. So you'll see the eyes are on their own layers because they weren't grouped with the smile. The smiley face is on its own layer. Um, basically, I can select all these layers by holding shift, and just drag them outside of layer one. Layer one's empty now, so I can go ahead and delete that. 
And for easy naming, um, I just want to name all these to keep track of them inside of After Effects. So I'll call this top shape. Um, I'll call this one bottom shape. Um, I may call this eye, I think this is the first eye, so we'll call it eye one. And then we'll call this one eye two. Um, we could really animate all these stars separately too, have them blink or flicker or something. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll just keep it simple and not animate those. Um, everything else should be named. I'll name this one Smile. Um, and then we can pretty much save this. Let me have a little bit more space in case we decide to move this up or down pretty far. Um, and let's just go ahead and save that file. So since um, After Effects is already open this time, we'll go up to File, Import, and Import File. And then from here, we can select sort of our Smile file here. Um, again, we have composition or footage. We need to make sure composition is selected and click open and it created this composition so we can double click on it. Again, these are all our illustrator layers, but we need to actually select them all by holding shift and then under create hit create shapes from vector layers. Um, so these are all our shapes. What I can do is just copy them with command C, delete them for a second. Then I can select all of these, delete our old uh, Illustrator ones and paste these back in. It looks like it pasted them in the wrong order. So I'm going to, just for the sake of time, manually select each one of these by holding down Command. Select all our A AI files to delete them. And then just hit the delete key. So now we just have our vector versions here and they're all named. So if I were to open up this circle, for instance, and open up Transform, these are all the properties we have. We can move its position. We can change maybe its scale. Uh, sorry, it's rotation, it's scale, we could change the opacity. So these are most of everything we have to choose from inside Webflow as well, a lot of the same properties. You're seeing while I'm sort of like scaling this up and down, the eyes aren't moving with it. So basically we want to be able to animate the eyes separately, but also have them linked to the circle. So if we want to make the circle the parent of the eyes with the eye layer selected, we grab this sort of squiggle icon and drag it directly onto the circle shape. And that way it's linked up. If you want it to, you could also select this drop down and manually select the layer you want to link it to. But I'll go ahead and select the smiles and the eyes. Now if I scale the shape up and down, you'll see everything's linked together, but these are still on their separate layers I can animate independently. Um, so maybe I'll take this first eye and we'll open this up, open up transform, and then maybe we'll just sort of scale it. So you're noticing as I'm scaling now, it's scaling from that center point in the center of the whole screen or artboard. Um, if I wanted to scale the eye from itself, we would use this option here, the pan behind tool, which is also the keyboard shortcut of Y on your keyboard. And then I can drag these crosshairs and see how it's snapping to each corner of the eye. If I wanted to put it in the center or manually position where I want it, to, I can uncheck snapping. Now I can move that crosshair exactly where I want it. So towards the bottom middle, but not the direct bottom. And that's working pretty well there. So now I can add sort of the scale. Uh, now see the eye is scaling from itself. If I want it to only move the top and bottom to where I can squish it, I would just click this chain to unlink it. You see now I can actually stretch it a bit. Um, so I'll add a, by hitting the stopwatch here, I'll add sort of a keyframe. Then I'll advance a couple frames and then just drag this all the way down, maybe even just type in zero so it completely closes, and then uh, scale this back to 100. Maybe I'll move these a little closer. Basically just want it to look like it winks, and that appears to be working just fine there. So it winks, and then maybe the whole smile can sort of jump up. Um, so we can grab this whole circle. We can add a couple frames in at a position point, then advance a little bit further and have it jump a little higher and then advance further again. And we can just copy this keyframe we already created for the start and paste it here so it lands back down where it started. Um, maybe we'll make it a little bit higher um, and then maybe make this not happen quite so quick. So we'll bring this out a little further. Let's see how that looks. So it winks and it jumps. There's definitely some fine tuning we could do here, but that appears to be working just fine. So maybe we'll also take this shape here and maybe we want to rotate it. So you can also open this all up or you can just hit R on your keyboard, which is a quick way to get to the rotate option. You'll see it's being rotated from the center. So 
with this same option selected, the pan behind, we can drag this anchor point. This time we actually do want it to snap directly to the center. So I'll turn snapping back on and drag that right to the middle there. And it appears to be centered up there. Um, so now with rotate selected, we can add sort of a keyframe, go in a couple frames and then rotate it maybe 45 degrees and then go out a couple frames and rotate it back to zero. And let's just see how this looks. So kind of spins in and spins out with a smile. Um, okay, that should work good there. And then let's say we want to rotate this other shape. So I'll drag kind of this anchor point to the center and then click on R for rotate, add a keyframe. Um, maybe I line this up with that one and maybe it goes negative 45. So it goes the opposite direction of the rotate this time. Um, and then we sort of bring it back over here and then rotate it back to zero, which is where it started. Um, let's see, let me hide the grids real quick. Um, and let's go ahead and preview that and see how it looks. Okay, so there's definitely some fine tuning. It looks kind of a little wonky. There's definitely some fine tuning I need to do, but um, that's the basics of how you could set up your scene and have that set up um, to export it for body moving. So I'll just go ahead and render this out really quickly. Go to body moving and um, same options we had selected this time for the settings. This time let's uncheck the swoosh and check the smile. Uh, select our destination folder, rename this um, to smile, and then just click render to render it out. That one took a little longer, but it's finished and we're all ready to import these directly into Webflow and start animating them. So that's uh, all we need. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If it was, definitely feel free to subscribe so you never miss another video. And I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.